I've been asked uh, by a few people to do a video on how I get the polished finish on a knife. Uh, so I'm going to show you that process and how I do it. There's probably other ways to do it, but I'll show you the way I do. I'm starting out with, in a lot of cases, and in the case I'm going to show you today, a piece of old rusty saw blade. This is uh, used to be a 54-inch blade. It was 3 16th inch thick and it is covered in rust. And then after the blade is cut out and profiled, then I heat treat the blade. And after it's heat treated, get out of the sun there, it's got kind of a bluish finish to it, but it's been cleaned up. I think I've got a couple more here before they've been heat treated. Yeah, kind of what they look like before heat treating and what they look like after heat treating so just uh, big chunks of rust have been knocked off of that and then it kind of turns a bluish color after the heat treat and temper process and then I do my initial grinding with uh, I'm using an 8 inch contact wheel I'm using a 50 grit belt and on this blade I have done that grinding. Let me get again over here where there's a little less light and you can see all the scratches without the sun glaring on it. So that's what it looks like after I've ground it with a 50 grit belt. And I'll get set up and show you how I do the rest of it. Okay, this is the contact wheel that I was using that I had the 50 grit belt on and then some of you have seen the video I've done on soft wheel grinding and hear me talk about it from time to time but I, I'm not a big fan of hand sanding um, so I try and get as everybody does I'm sure get most of the scratches out of the blade um, and then leave very little to be hand sanded now to do that I found it easier to use what I call a soft wheel what was shown to me and you can see that set up right here it's basically an 8 inch wheel that's been milled down a half an inch and then quarter inch felt has been attached to it um, so I'm still I still have an 8 inch diameter wheel and when it all is said and done here's what one looks like and the felt is just glued on. I honestly don't know a source for this felt. It was given to me. It's a very, very dense uh, felt. I don't know what the original application was for it. Uh, the guy that bought it had to buy a, a pretty good quantity of it. And then uh, he gave it out. But he bought it probably 15 years ago. So there, I, don't, I really don't know the source for that. And then what I'm going to do is progress through the belt. You know, started with 50 grit, then I'm going to go to 120, and then I'm going to go to 220, and then I'm going to go to 400. And I usually stop at 400. Um, occasionally, I do have some 600 and 800 grit belts. And then that last belt that you see in the corner is one I've been using about two years now. It's a worn out 800 grit belt with uh, buffing compound on it. So it's almost like stropping a knife. It's not going to really take out any scratches, but it'll sure put a polish on it. Um, so those are the belts that I'm using. And the setup that I have over here, we'll go ahead and get started with the 120, and then progress through the different grits and show you how each one looks. And again, when you see me take the blade out of the view of the camera, I'm dipping it in my quench bucket down here. That's why I use bare hands. Um, I want to be able to feel the temperature of the steel when I'm grinding. Um, don't want to change the temper on this blade. I've heat treated it to where I want it to be, so I don't want to change that at all. Uh, a tip for your quench bucket, um, when you dip in there, things will float on the top of it. Well, Things will float on the surface, uh, be it filings from... Um, your grinding or uh, your handle material or whatever you've got in the air it's going to float on the surface and then after you quench the blade it sticks or comes out on the blade put a little bit of dish soap in there it changes the surface tension of the water and uh, works pretty good
want to show you the difference the difference after three passes here hopefully it's coming through that you can see it um, with the light from the window of my shop the scratches are pretty deep and just three passes on a 120 belt uh, changes that and I, I just think you get a better finish using the uh, soft wheel if you're using a 120 belt on the harder contact wheel you're still going to take out the bigger scratches people more experienced than me can do a whole lot better job but we'll keep going here Purposely not going to grind up here. Who knows? I may even leave it blue. Uh, but I'm just going to grind the, um, do the hollow grind and show you how that looks. But you can see it doesn't take a lot. Just a few passes on the 120 grit. And now I'm going to change to the 220. I've got the 220 belt. Keep uh, going. good with the 400. Done with the 600 grit. All right, the polishing or stropping belt is on now, so I'm going to do that. You may have noticed that I'm not dunking the uh, blade as much as I'm going. When I'm using the finer grit belt, I'm using very, very light pressure. I'm not trying to remove a lot of metal. I just want to get it down to the, where the scratches are out.
after having used the green compound and having added it, I've got compound all over the blade. Let's wipe it off and see what I've got. Could take this off with a buffing wheel, which we'll go to next, but just to show you what it looks like. You get a pretty good finish going that way. We'll set it up on the buffing wheel and see what we can do with it. I hope this camera angle comes out. For my buffer, I'm using a uh, one and a half horsepower pump motor. Um, turns at 3450 RPM. The wheel I've got on it is not ideal. It's rather worn out and soft. Um, a 10 inch wheel would be better, but this is what I've got at the time being, so this is what I'm going to use. Uh, for this, I'm just going to I've got to take scratches out you use a black compound then you can use a white compound and then finally a green compound for a polish I'm just going to use the green compound and we'll see how that turns out did with my little terry cloth. Let me get it and show you what one side looks like. Having just hit it with a couple of passes on the buffer, I'm sure I'll have to do more on it. But that's not going to come out here. Let me uh, take the camera outside so you can see it better in the light. And there you have it. Anyway, that's the way I get a finish on a knife. Hope that helps those that were curious. Now I guess i got to finish the rest of the knife. Thanks for watching.